Today, I'm going to show you how to very quickly and easily set up guided feature tours using GuideChimp. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be checking out something called GuideChimp, which is a JavaScript library that helps you very quickly and easily set up guided feature tours or onboarding experiences for your projects. So just again, to show you what's happening here, um, this is actually the project from my front end developer crash course here earlier this year. Um, if you refresh it, somebody, you know, perhaps comes to your app the first time, we'll see I, we have this little section here where I'm highlighting the, the title, which doesn't really make sense, but you know how it works. Um, we can see there's a progress bar down here, and this is all customizable. I mean, you can have custom buttons. I didn't style this one, but you can style it easily. Um, also, you know, you just attach an ID to any of your elements that you want to feature along with information, and it all just works. It also works responsively. So if I come down here, refresh it, uh, it just works very well, it has this edge detection so nothing gets cut off or creates scroll bars like that. Um, so yeah, it works very well. And I'll be showing you guys exactly how to get this set up and running. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, to get started, we're going to go ahead and check out the main page, the GitHub page for GuideChimp. And there's a lot of information here. Um, it's going to tell you um, what you can do with it, um, a bunch of features which you can check out on your own time. Um, how to use. Okay, so you can install using a CDN, um, installing with Node.js and NPM, which is what we'll be doing, and documentation. All right, so this part's important. If we click here, it's a little bit confusing just because there's a home button and you, know, you don't really see what the heck's happening. In fact, if you go to like these links, they don't seem to really work. I uh, configure, I guess, well, I guess that works, never mind. But there's a pages section here, and this is where I basically use to, to navigate around to learn more about what you can do. So this is just for your reference. We're not gonna really be covering this stuff specifically just yet. Um, also, we're gonna be using Parcel, um, and this is a blazing fast zero configuration web app application bundler. Um, we're gonna be using it because we're gonna be using the um, Node Package Manager to install the GuideChimp dependency, and we're gonna use this just to simply allow us to import it. All right, so if you're not sure what a Parcel is, uh, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to install it and such. It's very simple, uh, but I do have another video. You can do a channel search, uh, just search for Parcel, and um, I have a more in-depth tutorial about that. So what we're gonna do is I currently have um, our Visual Studio Code open in a folder called GuideChimp. And just real quickly, this is just, um, this is the same project that I did um, for a recent crash course. And you know, nothing has here has really changed. Let me get rid of that, that's not supposed to be there. Um, and one thing to note that there is a script source that's po pointing to a file called index.js. This is where our uh, JavaScript will go. And it's a very light JavaScript, nothing crazy is happening. Um, so we wanna create that. So index.js, all right, that's created. And then also let's head on to the console. I'm in the same folder as this project here. Let me increase the size so you guys can see. And first I'm gonna run npm init hyphen y. And that's just gonna create a package.json file for us because then we can go ahead and install GuideChimp. And so the GuideChimp installation, if I click on here, go back there, npm install GuideChimp. We'll go ahead and paste that. And there we go, we're good to go there. And then what we'll do is also, I you wanna make sure that you install, if you haven't already, the parcel bundler, all right? So to do that, npm install hyphen g for global parcel bundler. I already have that installed. If not, you can go ahead and run that command. And then now we could just type in parcel index.html. And momentarily, okay, there we go. We got 
this right there. We can open up a browser, go ahead and paste that. And then there we go. So we don't have our guide chimp actually working right now. There's no user tour. And so that's what we're gonna focus on now. So you can see it is responsive um, and we'll definitely make sure that the guided tour will work correctly in the responsive environment. All right, so what we'll do now is go ahead and let me close our, yeah, let's minimize that. We'll go ahead and we'll go to our index.html uh, and we're gonna add IDs, specific the ID attributes, if I could talk, specifically to the elements that we want to highlight as a part of the guided feature tour. Um, so I think going back to our example, maybe we'll just highlight, you know, this right here, um, and then this description, of course, why would you ever do that? In the real world environment, if you have some type of uh, project or service people can use, you'd be highlighting buttons or features or whatever. Uh, but again, you could just add these to anything you want in your, your element. Um, and then we'll do this, we'll highlight this form. So to do that, we are going to find our elements. This is gonna be ID equals, I'm gonna call it step one. You can call them whatever you want. Um, this will be step two. And then finally, step three, great. So there's a few different ways, especially according to uh, the documentation in terms of how you can get up and running. So uh, I believe it's in the basic usage section. You can define all the parameters as HTML attributes right here inside of your HTML, or you could set it all up using JavaScript. All right, so um, I'm not even going to use this way because instead, we can pass in an array of objects for each of your steps. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go to index.js. And I did initially have some uh, other, let's see here. Yeah, I had some other HTML or, or CSS rather for the project alone. This has nothing to do with GuideChamp. I'm just gonna get it uh, added there. But so right now, what we need to do is we need to import GuideChimp, all right? So we already installed it with NPM. I'm gonna import it from up there. It's dimmed out because it's just telling us we haven't used it anywhere yet. And now we wanna create an array. So we're gonna to say uh, let tour, not let tour, let tour equals our array. And then we'll have objects for each individual tour element, I guess you could call. Um, so inside of here, it accepts the element. So um, it's gonna look for this element right here. So this is gonna be in relation to the step one, which is on the, the, the title portion or the header, heading rather, of the document. Title, all right, this will show up like in the little blip that shows up. Uh, the title will be an amazing title. And this one, next up is description. Um, I'm gonna paste this in on off the side of my document there on the other monitor. And there we go. I mean, that's the very basic uh, setting or sets, you know, the, the, the way you could set it up in a very basic sense. Um, I think configure is where you wanna go to find out all of the other properties that you can specify. There's also methods here and there's events. So it's, it's you know, quite well defined and, and dynamic and flexible. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a couple of other things um, or a couple of other elements and just pause so you don't have to be bored or you know with all this. All right, so I just simply basically copied, copied and pasted these. Um, they are unique titles and descriptions, but it really is just step one, step two, step three, okay? Um, we're gonna add a couple other properties as you'll see that we'll wanna do, um, but let's go ahead and run this, except first we have to I uh, add two lines. First, we have to create a, a guide chimp property. All right, so guide chimp, new guide chimp, and we're gonna pass in our tour right here. And then we simply run guide chimp start method. All right, so we'll save that. We'll go back to our document. And you're gonna, sign, you're gonna see, what where's it at? Well, that's because we haven't imported the CSS. And you can see it's just down here. There's, you, you can't use it essentially. So you have to import their CSS somewhere. You could either import it up here 
by using um, import and then just referencing the location of the CSS file. Or what I found to be better is in my SAS file, I'm gonna import it here at the top. And then that way I can overwrite any of their rule sets so I can create custom styling on my own. So to do that, we're gonna come up here, import guidechimp dist and then guidechimp min.css. We'll save this and it should now hopefully work and it doesn't. All right, so, oh, that's because I'm not watching my SAS file. All right, now it should hopefully work. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Now we have a couple issues with this. Notice how, you know, it says the healthy experience. This is white text. And so they're by default adding this sort of uh, very light gray uh, issue or, or background on it. And so you can't see white text, right? And so that's why you can go ahead and change the CSS to your liking. So, oh, and also the positioning was kind of off. So we have it at the bottom here. This one shows up at the top, it's kind of strange. And this one shows up the top, I don't like that. So we can also change the positioning as well. So those two things we need to fix. Um, so going back to our Visual Studio code, uh, <clears throat> right here, what we can do is we could target the specific element that we need to change. Um, before I do that real quickly, we'll go back and I'll show you how you can find out which elements that you want to change. So um, let's refresh. We'll hit Control Shift I to get out the dev console. And this is what we want to change this overlay right here. Uh, let me pull this down. We can see this is called GC Highlight. It's a class. So all we have to do is just override that and change the background to none because we can see all the CSS properties down here, uh, right here. So you'll see background color is this white color right here. So you could change it to whatever you want, maybe black or just to none, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. So GC highlight, background, none. Save it, come back um, wherever our document is. And there we go. So now by default, it's dimming every other element out except for the one that the ID, or step one ID is applied to. And then now, let's get rid of that. We can hit this and now it's highlighting the description next and then also this section next as well. And so I, it's pretty cool. You can see that by default, it has um, this little progress bar, this orange area, which by the way, you can change that color as well. You can change all this stuff. Um, and it's kind of like a progress bar. There's currently three, so you can see this is about like 33% width. Um, next up, it comes out here all the way to 66%. And so it's just kind of like a visual guide for a progress bar, which you can, by the way, also turn off in the settings. All right, so next up, let's fix the position. I want them all to show up beneath the elements. So we will go back to our JavaScript and we will specify right after description, a position, and we'll say bottom. We'll do that for this one as well. Save it. And now, positions bottom. Uh, that one was naturally at the bottom already, but we added it on the middle one. There we go, it's at the bottom. And this one's at the bottom as well. So let's also check out, for instance, if this works uh, in a responsive manner. So we can see um, it changes from here to there slightly. Of course, it's gonna work here. There wasn't much of a change. There we go. And then also, it also works here in mobile. Very, very, very cool. Um, so that's not the final thing. What if you wanted to add like a custom button or some other element here? Um, to like point them to a different page or have some other L or some, some something else pop up or whatever. Maybe like a, you'll have like a, a video. Maybe they can watch a video on this specific element. Um, so what we can do is come out here and what we'll say is we're going to create a buttons array. We'll do it on the middle one. Inside of buttons, put our comma there. We'll go ahead and say, an object, so you can have multiple buttons, just create multiple objects, title, we'll just say, um, see more, I don't know, whatever. 
and then we'll say, um, we'll give it a class. That way we can style the button custom if we wish. And this is coming straight from their documentation, by the way. And then we can have on click as an event function and we open up in there, then we could just put whatever you want. We can console log something to make sure it's working. Um, we could open up a new URL. So we can say window.open, and then we'll say HTTP google.com, and then target blank. You know, there's a million things you could do with JavaScript, of course, that's just one. So now checking it out, let's go to that middle button. There it is, see more. Of course, this looks pretty ugly. You would wanna style it with that class that we specified in CSS. I'm not gonna do that. You get the point. We click it and google.com is showing up. Awesome, awesome, easy peasy stuff. Now, one thing I did wanna mention, uh, if we go back, there is one, uh, one issue a lot of people aren't gonna like uh, because nobody wants to pay money for anything. But there is a, a licensing area. So terms of use, uh, commercial use for open source. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you can have one domain if it's free, if you're doing the free version. Um, you can't remove the attribution. The attribution is uh, really small. You can barely see it. It says made with guide ch chimp right here. Um, also extensions, customization and support. Although I did customize mine in terms of CSS at least, I'm not sure if that's breaking rules or whatever. Um, but anyhow, you can start now with that or you can do a commercial unlimited domains, all that stuff's unlocked. And one thing that's kind of annoying to me is you have to contact them with a contact form. Um, it would be nice just to, you know, purchase it right here, whatever, however they're setting this up. But either way, it's a, it's a good project here um, and just makes these feature tours very easy. All right, so once again, I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something new. If you like GuideChimp, go ahead and use it. Also, you can use Shepard.js to do the same thing. I'm gonna try to remember to link that video that I did uh, about a year or two ago on using Shepard.js, which is 100% free alternative to GuideChimp. All right, I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.